Okay, I think I might go ahead and start. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yep. Okay, good stuff. So yeah, um, Ferris and myself will be presenting this paper today called Naive Student Leveraging Semi-Supervised Learning in Video Sequences for Urban Scene Segmentation. So the motivations and objectives of the paper um, and the research. So supervised learning is quite a labor intensive task um, in terms of annotation, especially in terms of annotation for segmentation tasks. Um, so for example, it may take up you know, 90 minutes per image to um, annotate all the segmentations. For a, for a segmentation task, which is a high amount of time. So the idea behind this investigation was to leverage semi-supervised learning um, in order to improve performance essentially by, but also including semantic instance and panoptic segmentation. So I will explain what panoptic segmentation is. So, here are the different types of segmentation tasks. So on image A there, you've got the ground, a ground truth, truth image. Uh, image B, you've got a segmentation, semantic segmentation. So that's semantically similar or semantically same objects per pixel uh, class labels. Um, so in painting per pixel in the semantically sim similar. So you can see there the, for example, the, the cars being the same object essentially, essentially the same class. Um, then we've got instance segmentation, which is per instance segmentation of, of each individual car here. So you can see the mask and the class label per object, including for, even for these people. So what panoptic segmentation tries to do is to combine these two approaches, the, sem the semantic and the instance segmentation, um, so that you, you essentially have a much more detailed segmentation of, of an image. So the panoptic segmentation encompasses both the stuff and the things, which, which are technical terms, surprisingly. Um, so the stuff is amorphous region, so similar textural material. So these are, these are you know, stuff is, um, yeah, grass, sky, road, things aren't necessarily individual objects, but uh, semantically the same. Um, and things such as objects, such as the cars in this image. So the panoptic segmentation here is showing or seeing everything at once, combining these two approaches for a much more detailed segmentation. So the methodology of this paper is a semi-supervised learning approach using a student teacher type system. So you train the teacher on um, actual manually annotated frames, which is one out of 30 in the cityscapes. And at each iteration, the model from the previous iteration generates pseudo labels for the unlabeled frames of the, uh, in the data set. And then these pseudo labels are used by the next student in the next iteration. So it trains one or so it, this is actually based on um, Noisy Student was the, I think it was the, an influence on this paper, but without noise in the augmentations. So if we go through kind of what the algorithmic approach is. So step one is you have a teacher network and you train on labeled, um, the labeled data. Um, and then once you've trained on this labeled data, you generate pseudo labels for the unlabeled frames using test time augmentations. Um, in this case, they used multi-scale inputs and left-right flips. Um, so then using those pseudo labeled frames, you then train a student. In this case, the student is either the same size or larger than the teacher network. Um, and then once you've trained on those pseudo labeled data, you can fine tune the student network. Um, this is, you, you only in this case, they only train on the labeled data with the student when they're doing evaluation. But um, basically after the first iteration, 
um, you can use all of the data. So in, in the first instance, it would just be using the labeled data to train the teacher who would do the pseudo label generation. And then you train the student, which then can replace the previous teacher. So the student essentially becomes a teacher and is trained on all of the all of the available data. And you do this for multiple iterations. Um, and if you want to evaluate, you can also fine tune the student on the, uh, the actual labeled data here. Um, so I think Ferris, if I hand over to you at this point for the next half, if that's all right. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so yeah, uh, so this is like uh, this figure here summarizes the algorithm that we have seen uh, step by step. So just repeating actually here that uh, uh, training the teacher network on initially the manually labeled images, but then utilizes the pseudo, uh, pseudo labeled and the manually uh, labeled images. Um, and uh, the aim of this network is to, to minimize the loss, which consists here of uh, three components, uh, which I will go through in the next slide. Uh, so this is like the, uh, uh, after that, uh, the, the teacher network produces those pseudo labels, and then uh, the student uh, network, uh, network get trained on uh, those uh, extra images. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to repeat the same stuff here. So uh, another contribution of this paper is that they uh, improved the uh, traditional loss uh, functions used in such tasks, which here mainly the, is the softmax cross entropy loss, which is uh, called LSEM here, for semantic segmentation. So in addition to that, they added two extra components, uh, which helps improving uh, the, the performance of models on like object detections and, and uh, segmentation masks, for instance. So those two uh, additional components are the mean squared error loss, which they call in the paper L heat map, which corresponds to predict predicting the center of the instance or, or of each instance in each image. And the other component is the L1 loss, which they call L offset. This is calculated for uh, every pixel as an offset regression corresponding to the uh, previous center of the uh, instance. Uh, move next to uh, how do they generate like the pseudo labels? Essentially, it's just like a simple test time augmentation. So they take the multiple versions of the image at multiple scales and they do uh, left right flips and then they feed all those images through the teacher network which will uh, produce the corresponding segmentation masks for those and then eventually they aggregate all those predictions of the teacher network to produce the, the final pseudo label. Uh, this of course improves over time so like uh, after the first iteration, the, the teacher will be better equipped to produce an even more detailed uh, pseudo labels. And this in terms help achieve uh, and it's help improve the, the performance over time. Okay, after that, uh, a quick um, um, mention to the set, uh, because here they, uh, they um, utilize an extra data set uh, to enhance uh, the pseudo labeling. So the main data set is the city scrapes data set. Uh, this is used for uh, uh, the, uh, they use that for the manually labeled images and they use that for uh, evaluation and testing. Uh, while they use the other two uh, data sets, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to enhance the, the uh, quality of the pseudo label produced. A nice uh, thing about this is the uh, site one metric here, which is called the panoptic quality. Uh, we wanted to highlight it here because I think it's a recent uh, metric that is, uh, uh, was originally uh, introduced in the panoptic segmentation paper. And the interesting part about this metric here is that combines uh, two uh, ways of measuring the quality. The first one is measuring the quality of the segmentation tasks, which looks mostly at the intersection of a union 
of the prediction compared to the ground truth. So this component doesn't take into consideration uh, the false positive or false negatives. While the other component, which they call the recognition quality, this in terms focus on the, like on those false uh, predictions. It's something similar to the F1 score, but uh, they just like combine it, uh, combine it in a different way. Uh, okay, so the results uh, here they compare with other available uh, work in the literature. Um, so those are all the available models here. Uh, what type of extra data they used when uh, producing the results? Uh, there's a training myth method. You can see that most of them uh, is using are using a supervised learning technique, except one exception. And we can see that that like the metrics are really improved here using this iterative semi-supervised uh, approach uh, in terms of panoptic quality, average precision, and mean uh, intersection over union. Um, yeah, pretty significant improvement here. And finally, just to show like uh, what type of results uh, can be obtained using this network. So in this like big uh, figure, we can see where they zoom into uh, like a small uh, batch of the image to show the, how the details of the segmentation improves over time. And, and you can see like here somehow, like the two uh, objects somehow appears as one, while in iteration two, uh, it looks much better. Uh, and it also shows in terms of metric across all like segmentation tasks, panoptic instance and segment, semantic segmentation, you can see that uh, the metrics improve iteration by iteration. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, it's like a pretty simple sort of uh, approach, but like the results are quite interesting. Um, I don't know if you have any questions.